The first time I met Jason Warren was when I was partnered with him for a school project. I had moved to the area months prior, and when our teacher gave out the list of partners, the boy sitting next to me muttered, good luck, in my ear. He looked at me almost sheepishly from across the room, and I felt a pang of empathy. I knew what it felt like to be treated like you were contagious. He was nervous and ducked his head to avoid me making eye contact with him. His dad is rich. I mean, like, mega rich. Carly spoke with her mouth full at the lunch table, relishing the words more than the food. You'd think that'd be good, right? She rolled her eyes. He's also super shady. My parents told me to stay away from him, and I just made sure everybody else knew. Her pigtails shook with excitement that she had somebody new to tell. So now you know, right? I chewed the hockey puck burger that was lunch and thought, Now I know, I echoed. When I invited Jason around, he thought I was joking. I assured him I wasn't, and even when he rang the doorbell on my front porch, he looked like he was in the wrong place. My mother put down a plate of lasagna in front of him, and he ate like he was starving. It took him three weeks of coming around my house for him to realize I wasn't trying to prank him. We were playing video games in my room, and he turned to me and blurted out, Thank you for doing this. I don't want to be ungrateful, but it's just that this has happened before, and... He broke off, his ears turning red. Come around mine next week. I've got a big screen. Jason's big screen covered the entire wall. The house was so large it had an elevator on the top floor. It was floors and floors of marble and mounted heads of elephants and lions on the walls. His dad was a big collector of exotic animals, apparently, and his house looked like a museum for it. The best thing, Jason told me happily, is down in the basement. It was an aquarium. Not just an aquarium, an endless tangle of corridors and tanks with fish that glittered under neon lights. Some I'd never seen before, and I hesitated back when we looked over the top of the shark tank and saw a shadow twice my size lurking in the depths. Going to see the aquarium was one of my favorite things, but never when Jason's dad was there. He had a strange demeanor, and Jason cowered when he was in the room. One day, Jason told me there was something special in the aquarium, something new I hadn't seen. He was practically shaking from excitement. Come over after school. I mean it. You won't want to miss it. I sat through the day nervous, my leg hitting my desk as I bounced it under the table. We walked through the fields to get back, and the more we discussed it, the more I had a feeling something was terribly wrong. Jason licked his palm and slicked back his hair. It was an out-of-place gesture, one that his father sometimes made. My dad says it's dangerous, that I can't touch it, whatever we do. We aren't even supposed to be down there. His voice suddenly had a conspiratory tone, and I hated it. I didn't want to be a part of whatever was going on in his head, especially if it involved pissing off his dad. Maybe I should get going, I tried to laugh it off. Pretty sure my parents want me back. Five minutes, that's all I'm asking. You'll never see anything like her again. The barrier I'd put in my head suddenly shifted. Her? I paused. She looks just like a girl. She's naked. He half whispered the last sentence, grinning at me like a Cheshire cat. The room was in the back where I'd never been before. We wove through mazes of anglers with their horrible gaping mouths open, angelfish floating through the halos of their tank spotlights. The tank was dark. I shivered in the cold, steel-beamed room, and Jason busied himself with a light switch, struggling to drag down the lever. My eyes strained into the pitchy black water, and a shiver went down my spine. Got it! Jason wrenched down the switch with a heavy clank that made me jump, and a small, milky spotlight came from the bottom of the tank. My heart almost stopped when I saw a girl floating in the gray. Her red hair floated like seaweed around her face, so long it filled the tank like a hazy halo. I... I... My mouth struggled to form words. Jason dragged me up the steps and I let him, numb in shock, until we looked over the edge into the murky water. The floor creaked below us and the girl floated, her blue lips moving. A mermaid. My dad says I get to have her on my 16th birthday. His voice was low with trepidation. I can't wait. The mermaid moved, twitched as if having a bad dream. A small noise, the creaking of wood, the lapping of water. I peered deeper, and my head buzzed as I saw the lacerations on her body. Don't worry, he says she loves it. Jason, I whispered, hoarse. This isn't right. The mermaid's eyes shot open, her eyes glowing like twin moons, and Jason jumped back with a yell. My limbs felt like they were in a dream as I moved towards the tank, and I felt the wet floor soak through my jeans as I knelt over the water. The mermaid's face grew closer and closer to the surface, and Jason's shouts faded out to a crackling white noise. Her small fingertips breached the surface, and I gasped in one breath. I was airborne, 
tumbling forwards and forwards endlessly until the deafening crash of the water dragged me under. The mermaid's hair curled around me, and for a moment the constriction made me panic, my lungs screaming against the lack of oxygen, a rotted face, a line next to mine so different from the one I'd seen above water, and I could feel the bubbles hit my nose as I screamed my last breath. Then there was nothing. It was all gone. My fear had been suddenly removed from me like throwing up after hours of sickness. The face was no longer death-like, but was now faces of women, maybe five or ten or a thousand. They drifted in front of me, and I knew I should be afraid, but an incredible, aching sadness was all that was left in me. Here she was, locked up like an animal. All that was left of her was slavery. Her sisters screamed out to her in the depths, and I saw their twisted mouths opening and shutting. The visions of Jason's father were of him lifting her out of the tank with a machine that cut into her skin, a dart in her neck, seeping the strength from her bones. In some of them, his friends were there, and the smell of alcohol was like napalm, but the water was nowhere to be found and she gasped out, asphyxiating. The discomfort grew, and I struggled in the water, trying to get the words out as my limbs moved unbearably slowly. I am not one of them. In my ears, the ocean wailed, and I felt her struggling to reach back out to it. In the briny darkness, nothing but thin streams of silver bubbles came out of my mouth. I remembered how I felt at the idea that a woman could be down here, helpless and unable to prevent two boys gawking at her, and the regret, the shame, overwhelmed me. I reached out, desperate, and caught something. The girl's hair, crimson, wrapped around my wrists, but it was not to constrain me. She held them and guided them until they touched a cold, hard mirror. For a small moment, we looked at our reflections, a girl and a boy floating in infinite starry water. Then her hand slipped into mine and I knew it wasn't a mirror. With one finger, I touched the glass of the tank and I don't know how it was possible, but the faintest thread of a crack appeared in front of me. I felt the hands of them all, the hands of a thousand in my hand, and I closed my eyes and tapped again. We spilled, head over tail, the world turning upside down. The unearthly scream of her joy as she fell, my own howl of pain as the glass of the shattered tank went into my leg. It all faded until nothing was left but silence. I turned and saw Jason, his face red and swollen from his tears. We were alone in the aquarium again, nothing but the drip of water as it fell from the remnants of the tank. The mermaid was gone, and we sat in silence for a while, wondering what we had done. Three days later, Jason's father went missing. He'd been a well-known figure in the area, so much so that it hadn't been a surprise to the police investigating it. Jason told me they were shocked that it had taken this long for it to happen. Both he and the men who'd been with him, strange mugshots that seemed familiar, even though they shouldn't, have been, have been mostly found in pieces. That night, I found a dark stone under my pillow, and I woke up with the smell of salty air in my nose. I think sometimes about what I saw when I was down in the water with the girl. And I think about the things she showed me in those horrible, murky depths. Sometimes, I think she was too kind. <laughs>